Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kent Merrill. Today on Slant Lens, we're going to take a look at medium format video. Now, this is not a new thing. It's been around for a while, but with the GFX 100 and the new Ninja V or 5, you now have Apple Pro Raw, uh, Res, full quality Pro Res in medium format. So I think now it's hit a consumer level. So yeah, this is kind of the first foray. Up until now, all we've had is the Alexa 65, which is like a multiple thousand dollar rental per day. Uh, you're shooting really big Marvel or Star Wars movies with that camera, but you're not going to see it in the hands of your local music video director. No. <laughs> so this is kind of exciting. I mean, it's a little janky with the external recorder. The rolling shutter is a little rough, but I am excited. Medium format video, shooting raw, you know, I would have dreamed about this stuff five years ago. So, so we're going to take a look at three cameras today. The C200 shooting raw. All these cameras are going to be shot on raw. We're going to also look at the GFX100 shooting raw, but recording to the uh, Ninja 5. That gives us a raw ProRes. And we're also going to have the Panasonic S1H, and we'll be shooting that with the Ninja V as well. That'll be in 6K raw, it's a little bit more high resolution, but that's just we got what we got here. So raw across the board, and just take a look at these and just see if you can tell the difference. And does medium format attract you? Does it mean anything to you? Let's get started and see what we got. All right, so this is the little motion test that we set up with each one of these cameras. They aren't exactly on the same angle, but they're as close as we can get them. Uh, the C200 uh, might be a little off to the side a little bit, but it's it's pretty darn close. I mean, they're very close together. The shutter angle is 90 degrees, so we get a little more detail with some of the explosions with him running. And the ISOs are a little different. It's 6, 640 on the S1H, 800 on the C200, and 1250 on the GFX. Those are all the base ISOs or native ISOs for the cameras when they're shooting raw. Right off, as you look at this, I mean, there's several things. If you just look through them very quickly, you can see the detail uh, becomes better. You know, when you go from Super 35 to that full frame, it's like nicer. But then when you go to that medium format, there's just a, it is so pretty and there's so much detail. There really is. The image, I mean, for me, the most drastic difference is actually between the C200 and the S1H. I feel mm -hmm. like the S1H image just really pops out at you. Um, and then you get it even more with the GFX. But for me, it's not as noticeable. I do notice more gritty detail in the GFX. You certainly see the, the auto fo or the focus. If you look at the depth of field there, if you look at each one of these next to each other, I mean, it's much shallower depth of field at 2.8 on that medium format compared to the, uh, the Super 35. And the rolling shutter didn't come into play here. I was kind of mm -hmm. curious because it is a little slow on the GFX if you know the explosions and him running, you would see anything. But turns out if you keep the camera still, it doesn't factor in unless I suppose you have a car driving by or something. They do these really beautiful close-ups looking straight down the barrel and here we have the C200 shooting raw and Dwight looking very serious. Very serious Dwight. <laughs> but it looks, I mean it's beautiful. It is beautiful. These are all again shot at a 2.8. Now if we pull up the S1H portrait shot, that bokeh just Blooms. Sure does. Yeah. It really blooms. That made a huge difference be the, between that Super 35 and the full frame. I like it. I like this because his face is in focus, but his shoulders and everything are already starting to fall yep, out. Yeah, falling out. Really cool. And now we have the GFX 100. Again, there was so much natural tonality here. The color separation was really good. I love the way that his face kind of pops out from everything else around it. It's hard when you're doing these big green or blue shifts with an image to not lose some of the skin tone, but the GFX held onto it really well, which I liked. It really is beautiful. Look at, like, talking about the focus, the way it falls off. This is falling off on his collar before the back <laughs> of his shoulders, you know? Yeah. And it just really isolates his face so wonderfully. But like you say, you could do that with just a 1.2 or 1.4 lens, you yeah. know, on that full frame. You'd get the same kind of a look. We just wanted to start as low as we could, and that's 1250 for the GFX, so we went 1250 across the board. So the light we have on his face is pulsating. It's got, the flame is kind of flickering, and so what you see in the all the black deep shadows there, that kind of pulse is the flame, not some kind of uh, issue with the ISO. Yeah, there are these lines in the background. Yeah. Kind of looks like fixed pattern noise, but it's actually just folds in the black cloth yeah. curtain we have yeah. back there. So the S1H is really clean at 1250. It really is. It's it seems cleaner than the GFX 100 to me. And that's native for the GFX 100. Yeah, the GFX 100 is already a little bit noisy. I might have been able to crush these blacks a little more. I was trying to keep, I was trying to use the, the scopes to keep everything even, but it's not a perfect job. But it is a little more noisy than the S1H, which is just surprising. I thought it would have uh, performed a little better. It is funny because even though it's more noisy, I feel like I see more detail in his face, which is, uh, which is kind of interesting. Well, but we're talking about grain 
versus image detail, yeah. you yeah. know, and there's just a bit depth and yeah. and sensor size to give you more information, but it's yeah. not necessarily holding the grain as well. That's true. Here we go, 3200 ISO. The Canon is not looking terribly great, but it's it's not a huge step it's up not, from 1250 no, actually, you know. It's not it's, terrible. It hasn't changed that much. It hasn't changed that much. If we go to the S1H, I feel like there's a big change with the S1H. It's not doing very well here. No, we see a lot of noise. And we see that usually with the S1H as you approach that dual gain of 4000, that's when it kind of gets better again. So this isn't that surprising. The GFX is doing terribly oh at 3200. Honestly, not what I expected. <laughs> I, me either. I thought it'd be much cleaner <laughs> at this point. But that's what, you, it, you know, the photo capabilities don't always translate to the video capabilities. Absolutely. Especially for these hybrid bodies. 6400 ISOs, pretty gritty on the Canon. And then if we go to the S1H, it actually cleaned up a little bit, I think, from before because, again, we're past that we're dual, past gain. dual gain. Yeah. But there is a, the whole noise floor is kind of raised. It's got this magenta not very deep blacks. Yeah, It is fascinating because we have tested uh, the GFX 100 it, with regards to stills and ISO and it performed extremely well. Yeah. But it, you're not seeing it in this video format at all. I would not want to shoot this uh, above its native. Even at its native it's not. It was kind of noisy. <laughs> Better in a full lit scene than a, a image like this that has so much shadow area. And if you are shooting in a shadow area like this I would not trust your monitor a ton. Maybe yeah add an extra stop if you can, open up a stop, or do whatever you can to give it more light, and then you can always bring it down in post and make it look darker. But you don't yeah. want to start from a noisy dark place. So what did we learn from this whole thing? <laughs> Pretty interesting. It is very interesting. I, I feel like I love the, the image quality. I love the, the focus fall off that you get with it. I think that's beautiful. But do I love it as much as I do full frame, I'm not so sure is it, it's that much better. I mean, it is better. There's no doubt right. about it. I, I kind of agree with you. I feel like the step from Super 35 to full frame felt big in, in every single case. You know, the image yep. pops out more, you have more information, it's less noisy. The step up to medium format didn't feel like such a jump with these cameras at least at this level, but there was a difference. I did see a difference and it's pretty interesting. If I were going to shoot something that, uh, you know, I could deal with the rolling shutter and stuff and I could deal with the workarounds, I might, I might try and shoot a project on this. I don't think I would make it a project that's all about low light. No. I mean, maybe the Alexa 65, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's a much different uh, camera, different sensor, but this sensor seems to struggle a little bit in that low light mm -hmm. doing video. But certainly not, and when we had a full lit scene, it was beautiful. The, the color depth was just fabulous. I think it's just a little early. I think we're going to see medium format come into its own. Mm -hmm. As we see uh, full frame kind of become the standard, then we'll move up to medium format, I guess. Maybe it'll cross a barrier where it's just more uh, cost, more work, more, you know, more difficult than it's worth. I don't know. That is possible. And if you look at the old 70 millimeter films and stuff, I mean, 70 millimeter was something you only used for Ben-Hur or Spartacus or a Tarantino movie. <laughs> you know, yeah. like those, you, you're not shooting 70 millimeter all the time. It's because at some point you do come up against physical limitations, whether it's the data or the sensor speed read, read speed. Um, or the lenses, so there are downsides to medium format and maybe it won't ever become mainstream, but it is nice to have an option even at our level. Alright, so leave us a comment below, let us know what you think about shooting medium format. Uh, we'd love to have you subscribe to us here at Salon Lens, so keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking. Let's look at the reasons we carry a tripod. Number one is we shoot a lot of times in low light. So you've got to put your camera on a tripod because your shutter is going to be longer than a 60th of a second. That's one of the main reasons that you use a tripod. You need to be able to shoot in low light. It also allows you to shoot HDRs or pixel shifting when you're going to shoot several different exposures at the same setup. It allows you to pan and do panoramic views so you can piece them together more easily. So a lot of these will have markings on it that allow you to set and move and shoot and set and move and shoot.